would like to show you how to explore a cube, data cube, and measure distances on the sky using JDAs. So first of all, um, we need some ingredients to do this because it will require using the interface of JDAs, but also coding in the notebook. So first of all, we need to import cubes because we will be working in cubes. So from JDAs, import cubes. The next thing we need, because we need to handle tables, we need to import NumPy as NP. Another ingredient that we need is SkyCord from AstroPy. So from AstroPy coordinates import SkyCord. And then the last ingredient we need is um, an ast another AstroPy uh, method to handle units. So from AstroPy import units as U for convenience. So these are uh, the few things we need. And uh, first of all, we can define a file that we want to work with. I have one handy here. This is a cube um, taken with JWST with a near spec instrument. And it's a very interesting source um, because it's an active gal galactic nucleus in the center with a ring of star formation around it. So we're about to see it. We first initialize cubes like this, then we load the data set in QBiz with the method load data, and we put the file name in here that I already defined, so I can just write the file. And then the last command is QBiz.show to actually show the viewer. And I modify the height um, so that it fits in my very zoomed in screen. So this will pull up the image in the, the, the cube in the cube is uh, configuration. Let me move here so I see the full cube. So um, just crash course on cube is. This is the flux viewer that changes when I scroll through the wavelength. This is the uncertainty viewer and this is the spectrum viewer. The default extraction is a collapse of the full cube. I know this data set, it's from program 1328. As I said, it's taken with near spec and it, um, it's uh, looking at NGC 7469 with, as I said, an active galactic nucleus in the center and ring the star formation around. And I know this one is the passion alpha line. We can just go near the line and then open the slice plugin. I open the plugin tray here at the top and then I can go in the slice, um, slice plugin. And if I scroll one slice at a time, I'll move over the passion alpha line and you'll see that the ring of star formation around the uh, nucleus light up. And this is the, the thing we're interested in uh, now. And I, I'm using this example um, to show you how to measure distances in an image, which you can do also in Invis if you want. It was just a cool example here in Cubis. So to do that, I need to open the markers plugin, which is just here right above the slice plugin. The markers plugin let me basically save the location of points in any of the viewers. We're working with the flux viewer. So I put my um, mouse in the flux viewer in the center where the active galactic nucleus is, and I hit M on my keyboard. It, the instructions are there also in the plugin. So I hit M, and here I'm saving this position. Then let's save two more positions uh, along the ring. So maybe one here and one here where there is another um, clump. So we have three positions saved, saved now, and I can see them in the table in the markers plugin. I can um, get the table out of the plugin to see it better. Here it is. And now I can see that I have the three entries and for the three entries, the coordinates and uh, the world coordinates are saved as, as 
uh, along with the values and the units and everything I might need from here. So let's get these out and go back to um, the viewer. Now, as I said, this is a combination of interacting with the interface with mouse clicks, uh, but also working from the notebook. So the interesting thing about JDavis is that it works into a Jupyter notebook, and so I can extract things into the notebook and continue my analysis outside of the tool. So for example, here I can access the table that I just showed you, but within the notebook. So I can call it, I can call the markers plugin, let's just call it mark PLG. And from CubeViz, I can access the plugins and I can access in particular the markers plugin here. Let me move a bit more in the center of the screen. So if I do mark plugin, mark PLG dot, I can then tab and see the options I have here. And there is an export table here, which is a function. So I can do export table and this will give me the table. So let's just give it a name. I can call it table. And so if I run this and I show the table, here is the table I showed you before, the exact same thing. It's just that now we have it within the notebook. So I have this table now, and this table, the column world, has the word coordinates. They're together. And um, for another piece that's coming later, I need to separate them. And to separate them, I can use NumPy. So I can define two arrays, array and deck, and I use NumPy transpose of that column that I just mentioned. So table, world, in quotes. Let's see if this worked. I can see what array it gives me. It gives me an array of the three arrays of these three markers. Same should be for deck. There you are. You have the decks, the declinations of these three markers. So now what I need to do is I need to build the sky cord objects for these three markers to be able to use um, a function called astropy separation that will then calculate that will then calculate the distance. So if I do chords, I define them as sky cord objects, and within here I need the array. I need to tell it that array is array, deck is deck. The, um, the two arrays I just created, and I need to tell it the units also. So I say unit equal u, which we defined before, dot deg for degrees. So now I have a list of sky chord objects, one for each. Now we can print the distances, and so uh, we can use the, the separation. Um, the separation method. So we can do print and we can, we can just do one at a time or we can do all, all at the same time. We do one as for this example. So the distance between the AGN, the active galactic nucleus and the ring is, and then we do chords zero, the first marker, separation, which is a method, chords, one, which is the others. And these will return in degrees, and I know already, so I just do arc second. And to remember that I did that, I add another text that says arc sec. So if I run this, the distance between the EGN and the ring is 1.6 arc seconds. And this, it, this distance is 1.6 or seconds on the sky. I leave it to you to calculate the actual distance. If you know the distance from Earth, from JWC to this object, and you know the angle now, you can use trigonometry to calculate the physical distance here. Enjoy. Enjoy.